So then we're here with uh, Phil Cooper, uh, double duty at this year's Nationals in class 9 and 10. Uh, Phil, uh, chilled out for the minute? Yeah, nice for the minute, everything's ready. We're just doing some scrutineering in a minute, but yeah. yeah. Looks as good as it could be, weather's alright. Good. Um, so as we say, you've got two cars, so you're going to be quite busy. Um, just uh, this is the main car that you use, this class 9, yeah. uh, which, funnily enough, you apart from a, a little running eights when you first went out of juniors, this is, this is the class you primarily went in. Yeah. Um, how does it really feel now compared to back then? The cars have come on so far, both with suspension and the weight of them is, is massively different to what they were five years ago. Um, doesn't compare to what I raced in. When did I come out of juniors? 2001. So yeah, they're completely different now. Yeah. So. Um, over 20 years now in the senior category, so you're obviously one of the, the more experienced, what seasoned veterans as it be. Uh, but as you say, class nines have changed a little bit. So can you just tell us a little bit about this car in particular? You brought it out last year. Yeah. Um, what 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 basically is it? So new car for last year, John Gay XE works in the chassis, Chevtech Duratech, brand new engine from Ford, and then Martin did what he does to them. Uh, suspension by Ian Little at Raid. Um, really top cars you know when you look to the data logging dash and the stuff you can learn from that that's how the job's moved on because a lot of people look to where the faults are with the car when a lot of time it's yourself and that can really highlight that sort of thing so yeah they have moved on a lot they say the weight you're talking the car i had back in 2011 this is 100 kilos lighter wow that's, that's a lot then over time yes. um, obviously yeah. Those who build these cars now, they find every way to make them as light as possible to, and then suit the power that they're going to have. So, um, obviously, you've had a few class nines over the years. How, like, even from the engine spec, how does this compare to say the other cars that you've raced? I've raced, so I raced a Honda a few years for a couple of years. That was um, very sedate. It was virtually standard I'm not sure the engine yeah, spec because it wasn't my car but it was very easy to drive very forgiving we're going to mommy, love. We're going quite back lucky to with the Toyota way. touring car engine that I had years ago because that was really larry but it was from a touring car it was a very high spec engine this is very very similar just a lot lighter yeah um, <laughs> I think the, diff the difference is when you go to that sort of spec or the touring car spec it's a lot narrower window to get it right when you're driving whereas like the Honda was very forgiving you had nine times out of ten no matter what you did it was right Whereas this isn't like that. Yeah, I've noticed this year you've obviously had to work hard with it. There's, um, you've, had, you've opened it a bit at times, the cars, you've had to sort of make some changes to it to get it worked to suit the varying conditions and get it how you like it. Um, but also you have a lot of people involved with, with obviously the various bits to help it all work together. Yeah, so over the winter, when we built the car for last year, we were waiting for a steel crank. Um, it didn't turn up in time so we ended up doing uh, the first pass <laughs> we ended up doing the first pass with well so we ended up we did last year with the standard crank the proper crank came for this year noticeable difference in the responsiveness of the engine so it took a little bit of dialing in to get the car to suit that you wouldn't think it'd be a big change again it narrows the window so when the car's right it's mega when it's not it's awful so so i take it then maybe the overall top speed doesn't feel any different but the initial response from it when you put the foot down on the throttle yeah. that's where you really feel yeah. it from the torque uh, and gating you know you, you you've got a rev window with a more standard engine you've got a wider window to get that right when yeah. you're on something like this it's a lot narrower window but when it's right it's mega yeah so we, we mentioned obviously there's quite a few names on the car um there's some people you've had a lot of support with over the years yeah um, like, how much of a, of a help is it getting these kind of businesses and companies involved? It's a massive help and it's something that's really hard to come by and I, and I, and I, I like to have a good relationship and I like to really give something back to the people who help me. So k and I mean when I started racing in juniors in 1998, K&N have supported me since then. Yeah. Rock Oil not long after, you know, it's a lot of years to have a lot of support off them sort of companies. And for me it's quite an honour to be involved with them type of companies, you know, it's proper motorsport companies. So to be able, like I say, to be able to give something back and represent them is massive for me. Good, good. So uh, we can go back to the two classes. You're racing in class nine and ten. Now to the outside, they look very similar. Yeah. Um, what is the main difference between the two cars that you're racing this weekend? So class nine uh, is up to two litre engines. Class ten's unlimited. That class ten there with the Honda in that's two point five. Um, it's less revs than this, but it's a lot more torque. Yeah. So different driving standard, different gearing, different driving style. Uh, probably standard with class ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, the main difference is the gearing, but. Yeah. Oh, from somewhere near. Yeah, and, and obviously with this being the Nationals this year, um, uh, and there's actually been quite a short turnaround between the last major event being the last Baz round and, yeah. and this weekend. So, how much work has really gone into getting the cars prepared? Although 
last bass round was wet, I didn't have an awful lot of work to do on this. That said, it was still stripped down, everything gone through, every nut and bolt checked. Um, really spent a lot of time on the class 10. It's Julian Heath's, he's got it for sale. Um, but because it's not been in my possession, if you like, for the season, yeah. I went through everything, we had the gearbox off, you know, we, we checked everything. Yeah. Um, on a week to week basis, the amount of time that goes in, you can wash them, put them in the garage and take them out and race but the amount of time to put in to put them like that every meeting is, is endless. Yeah, and obviously we know you, you've been very successful um, over the years in the class, uh, in, well, in various classes, particularly the specials. Uh, you have been in the sevens, obviously, you've had some success there as well, but you always come back to the, the specials and in fact the nines as well. So why is it class nine primarily that you seem to enjoy? I do love nines, whether it's because my dad raced it when I was in juniors, whether it's because of what I came into when I came out of juniors. I think a proper spec class nine is the fastest car in the sport. We had many fastest fans where I raced Ant, Hopi, like where they were in eights and I was in a nine, one, I don't know what, fastest special, fastest man against all them cars yeah. on a straight line start. Yes, your average nine is not as quick as your average eight, there's no doubt in that and, 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 and anybody can put that point of view across. But when you're talking 320 brake and a lot less than 500 kilos, you know, it's fair figures and you can get it down. I, I do believe they're the quickest cars in sport. Yeah. And, and like I said, we, we're going back to 20 years or so when you, you first ju jumped in the 90s, you was obviously the young and the class was sort of evolving then. There were, like your dad's car was one of the last of, of an older breed such yeah. and, and you was moving into like when you moved with the Maverick and then and then the ARD, so much more refined chassis there and that. Um, but now, the class seems very strong as well. Like, the, like it had its dwindling moments when people dropped yeah. out and now it's, it's really up in the numbers again. So highly competitive. So, uh, yeah, do you, do you feel like it's more competitive now to back then as well? I think back then when I came out of juniors, the class was really, really good. So you had the likes of Philly and Stephen with the two Millingtons. You had John Whitehouse, you had Stuart Whitehouse, you had Dave Smith with the, with the uh, Cosworth. You had some really, really, really good drivers. Even to, your, you know, you, you got Kershaw and Brooksies and Reed Speed. To beat them took some doing. And what I noticed when I went to class eight was, yeah, this at a bass round with 80 class eights, any one of 30 can win that final. But there's only five that can win the final this week, next week, and the week after. Yeah. When you look at somewhere like class nine, yeah, there's probably 15 that can win the final, but it's the same ones every time. Yeah. Uh, he did have his dwindling years. I, I was in class seven and eight, I think, for a couple of years, and I think, I think he did die off a bit. When you look at now, some of the lads have been there, you know, like Sam Pinch is a hell of a driver. You watch him around here on a shiny day, he's really smooth. There's some really, really good drivers that don't make mistakes. And yeah. It's hard, so. And, and obviously, you, you would love to win again. Um, yeah. how, how do you play each race? Obviously, we know the weather's going to be a bit unpredictable coming into this. Um, we know that there's going to be some rain. How much we get, when yeah. we exactly get it, is still a bit unsure. Yeah. Um, how do you play it? Do you try and get through the first race, see where you sit and go from there? Or is it you, you feel like you, you've, got to, you've got to get a win from the get-go? That's the big thing, really. Obviously, it's good to get good results because it gives you a good great pick for the final but it's more important to be in that final than have a good grip pick. So, take it as it comes in the first race and work from there. Um, I'd rather be eighth qualifier and in the final than not in it at all. So, exactly. it's not all about wins in the East, not at all. And also then with the Nationals, it's unique where you have your pairings and your heat draws. Do you ever look at that or yeah, yeah. you do You do yeah. study it? So, so do, you, do you ever look at racing and think, I've really got to work hard on this one or you think, yeah, that one, I take it easy or do you ever sit like that and take each race the same? I think all of them are hard. You can't ever, if you ever sit back and think you've got an easy race then it's not going to be easy. It's going to, it could be a mistake, you'll end up with a bad result. I've always believed that it's a good thing to have a hard run to the final. If you look at your ease and think they're hard, if you get there come final time you're going to be somewhere near. I've had years where I've had let's say a steadier run to the final, qualified on three wins and then when you get against some of the other lads it's like a reality check. So. I think some of the years you mentioned it the other day when Andy Anley and Phil Tappen were tied. Yeah. He's good for both of them because by the time you get to that fourth race, you're both on the money. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do forget that. Like they look at their pairing, and they suddenly forget there's another six in each race. So um, yeah. you're going to wait. Um, just I think the thing, the thing to say is like you get a hard pairing, like 
is Daz and Dan tied in Class yeah, A. Yeah, Daz and Dan Thomas. So yeah. anybody that meets that pairing through Class A has got a real RD, down there. So exactly. that's where it can make a difference. Exactly. And, and just looking back on your racing career then, I think uh, we're at uh, 10 senior titles, I think, now, nationals, yeah. and, and the one juniors. Obviously, we know the juniors is, is treasured because you only get so many years to go at that. Yeah. And you was you was had the, the timing uh, in your final year to do that. But out of your senior national titles, then, which one do you hold the most? They're all to win one is you know look how long it took me to win one. My dad took years, yeah. so to win one is mega. Yeah. If I had to pick a year, 2012 when I won seven and eight. Yeah. And you look at the if you had to pick competitive classes to win seven and eight, to win seven or eight is a big thing. Yeah. To win them both in the same year is you know like that. I look back on that. The two trophies from that year are sat on top of one of the toolboxes, and that's the one that like. You do, you do hold it. Yeah. yeah. I bet you probably thought like because your dad was always credited as like being one of the best to never win it. It took it obviously it took him a what like thirty odd years to win. Yeah. Um, you was you probably feeling the same at some point because it, it like you was in two thousand one up into the seniors and then yeah. probably for about five years straight you was about the favourite for class nine and it yeah. just never worked. Two thousand nine was the first one and we had year after year where I'd have three wins. I had one year at Dales and had three wins. Uh, sheared a gear in the line in the final yeah. as soon as I dropped clutch. And I sat there and watched Power Alex run it, and, I, and I, you know, it gets to you, but you think, like, is this what it's going to be like? Yeah, it was a missed um, opportunity, like, but it's yeah. out of your hands. Yeah, it, it was. You probably, you probably did you feel like, well, it took me dad that long, will it take me <laughs> the same amount of time? It's one of them where you've only got once a year, so that's why everything gets a little bit more prep because if a silly thing lets you down, yeah. you've got to wait 12 months for another goal, so everything yeah. gets content. And obviously, if you if you are, you get through the three heats and you've made the file in either either car or both cars, how do you play it then? Uh, is it a case of you really need to watch the track evolution and the conditions, the start line, see how that's going, and and then then you can decide what you do with the car? Yeah, very much, yeah. So, I could change it down in the lanes, you know, obviously we can't do anything on the start line, that's what the rules dictate, but down in the holding lane, it's still time to mess with stuff. Um, simply, like the last time we had the Nationals here, I was top qualifier in 7 and 10. Pit me 10 grid, and they wanted me to pit me, me sorry, I pit me 7 grid. They wanted me to pit me 10 grid at the side at the same time, and I, and I didn't because the track might change. If I go for the same grid and it's rubbish, you know, I kick myself. So it's changing that fast that, you know, you've got to wait and see. So obviously you want to wait for both, um, and obviously you'd accept both. But uh, is this still more of the focus because it's your car, or you, you're obviously putting equal attention into to both? Class yeah, nine, so. yeah, there's not. Yeah, I'd love to win nine. I'd love to win ten. If if I didn't win a, if I didn't want to win them both equally, I'd only have one. Yeah. So it's yeah, both both equal. Right. Well, thank you very much, Phil. Um, wish you all the best for the weekend Thanks of course us. and uh, you never know come Sunday afternoon we could uh, be up on the podium again if not I'm See. sure you'll be you'll be uh, congratulating those who, who yeah, do yeah, succeed yeah, yeah. all right thank you Thanks have us. a good one cheers and uh, enjoy the weekend cheers and despite facing difficult weather conditions and tough opposition it would be victory in the end for Phil in the class 9 final this would be his fourth national title in the class, no but above all that, it now makes him a 12-time national champion.